Earlier this evening, I was speaking to someone who was saying, I'm so, so suicidal. And I said, but why? Do you know what the reason was? Because people have more than me. <laughs> Basically, that's what was being said. I have less. I don't really have a proper job. I don't really, I'm struggling for years doing this and doing that. You know, I have this constant health matter. I have what? And I said, do you know what? Don't judge based on what others have. Look at what you do have. Do you know there is a verse of the Quran where Allah says, Today, I want to say something about this verse that you may not have heard before. The meaning, the simple meaning of it is, if you were to try and count the favors of Allah upon you, you won't be able to count them all. That's the simple meaning of the verse. Right? But if you were to count, now I'm raising the other side of it. If you were to count what Allah did not give you, you can count those. Because it's just limited. Allahu Akbar. Did you think of that? If Allah's telling you, when I favored you, you won't even realize the favor. How many of you consider the breathing from your nose as a favor of Allah until it's taken away? We didn't even count that. How many of you consider the ability to see without having a switch on the side to, to tune your eyes to look in focus as a gift of Allah? And one of the biggest gifts, the hearing, the sight, the breathing, the mouth, the ability to eat, the tongue, the hair, by the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. All these are gifts of Allah. If you try to count the gifts of Allah, you won't manage. But if you count what Allah didn't give you, did not give you, you will be able to count. Why? Because there are a few things. What don't you have? I don't have this, 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 this. If I ask you, brother, what don't you have? You'll, you'll tell me five or ten things. That's it. Anything else? Say no, that's about it. Look at the favors of Allah. Allah says, we've given you way beyond what we haven't given you. But man, do you know why he becomes that way in negativity? He concentrates on the 10 things Allah didn't give him or her, and he forgets about the billions of things that he's got as a gift of Allah, favor of Allah. And I tell you something, every time you think you're going through a problem, there are people not too far from you who are going through a bigger problem, but they are probably just a little bit more easygoing than you because they have managed it and coped with it by the help of Allah. So if you turn to Allah, he will make your negativity simple for you. It becomes a positive. If you lost a job or you suffered in your health, or for example, you suffered in your family, or you lost a loved one, or you have a major issue this way, that way, if that particular negative item brought you closer to Allah, wallahi, it was a gift of Allah. If at a point you were sinning and you were sinning and you were sinning and you didn't even have Allah in your equation because you were young and bubbling, bursting with energies, who is going to stop me? And you kept on sinning and sinning until one day something happened and it had to come to an abrupt stop and you stopped sinning. And then there came a time when you shed a tear to Allah and you said, oh Allah, help me. Imagine you haven't yet asked forgiveness of Allah, but because your life has come or has turned upside down, you're asking Allah to turn it the right way round again. Was that not Allah's favor upon you that you stopped the sin at least? Should you not seek the forgiveness of Allah, clear the slate? It's not difficult, my brothers, my sisters, to clean your slate here and now. No matter what you've done on earth, you can clean the slate here and now by the will of Allah. The only problem is when you have taken from the rights of a fellow human being, you're going to have to make peace with them. You're going to have to go and sort the matter out. You can't say, oh, wow, I just stole a million quid from this guy and I can clean my slate here and now. That's what I was told. No, you must go and return the money. Or if that person is generous enough and you tell them, listen, bro, I pinched a million from you. He said, nah, it's okay, minor, it's okay. 
Are you forgiven? Whoa, subhanallah. I don't think that would happen even if he's a trillionaire. And say, hey, hey, you pay back every penny. And then you, you think to yourself, why did I even tell him? He didn't even know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. The point I'm raising is between you and Allah, you clear the slate here and now. Oh Allah, forgive us. We don't want to sin. We won't sin. We regret what we've done. We will not do it again. We seek your forgiveness. Help us through the path. Make us strong. There is no point in sinning. Do you know, you feel like a fool when you grow a little bit older and you start looking back and thinking, when I had my energies, you know, I just wasted them in all nonsense. And for that reason, the same hadith I spoke about that mentions a person whose heart is hanging in the masjid or connected to the masjid makes mention of another person. Shabun. Nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. A young person, male or female, who grew up in that youth and the young age, you know, the teenage and slightly beyond in the obedience of Allah. In the obedience of Allah. When you're young and you want to be a little bit outrageous, mostly to be noticed, to be noticed, to be this way, that way. Allah says, you calm down, calm down. Whatever you do, don't do the wrong thing. The best gift that you could give yourself at that point is to have good friends, a lovely circle. When you have a beautiful circle around you, automatically you'll be doing the right thing. You won't be doing the wrong thing. Imagine you're cruising with your friends. Time for salah. They want to pray. You're not so keen. What will happen? Because of the virtue of the people around you, you end up praying. I had good guys with me. But if you're a person who prays, and then you're cruising with people who don't pray and there are a lot of them. What will happen? Shaitan might come to you and make you feel embarrassed of worshipping your Lord. Subhanallah. So you're quiet about it. You haven't mentioned prayer and you're just okay with it. And you, the time passed and what happened? You didn't pray. Why? Because all your friends didn't pray either. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.